Some of you might have heard this before. For who for is da who door is welcome Christmas come this way. For who for is da who door is welcome Christmas Christmas day. Welcome, welcome, Fahu Ramus. Welcome, welcome, Dahu Damus. Christmas Day is in our grasp, so long as we have hands to clasp. Fahu Fores, Dahu Dores. Welcome, Christmas, bring your cheer. Fahu Fores, Dahu Dores, welcome all who's far and near. Welcome Christmas, Fahu Ramus, welcome Christmas, Dahu Damus. Christmas time will always be just as long as we have we. Fahu Fores, Dahu Dores, welcome Christmas, bring your light. Fahu Fores, Dahu Dores, welcome Christmas day so bright. Welcome Christmas, Fahu Ramus, welcome Christmas, Dahu Damus. Welcome Christmas while we stand heart to heart and hand in hand. Fahu Fores, Dahu Dores, welcome, welcome Christmas, Christmas Day. Well, thank you for indulging me. <laughs> I have a, I guess I have a yen for intro introducing popular culture into the secular, into the uh, divine, sacred space. But <laughs> what's that? Yeah, that's from How the Grinch Stole Christmas, um, and it's a song about welcoming Christmas, and that's my sermon or meditation title is welcoming Christmas. And as I alluded to uh, during the joys and concerns, we were uh, busy yesterday in our own way, welcoming Christmas with all the preparations here uh, for tonight's service where we welcome Christmas uh, in a very festive fashion uh, that we've done for almost 50 years here at Chelsea Community Church. But there's also the, uh, how we welcome Christmas in the way we live our lives and, and the way our body politic conducts its uh, affairs in the world and, and, the, and how the uh, nations of the world act on that world stage in preparing and welcoming Christmas, at least uh, for those who who, uh, for whom Christmas is something that they uh, that they practice. Of course, it's not for everybody, but uh, for us, uh, I'd like to go back to the original Christmas. It was a fairly dark time. We don't know if it actually happened in winter time, the dark time of the year, but that's how we've traditionally celebrated. It's in a time where the days are getting sh uh, brighter, actually, after so much darkness increasing. And when the baby Jesus was born, he was born to a, to a young unwed mother, which was not the most promising situation to be born into at that time or even today, necessarily. So I think we've come a long way in taking out that particular stigma in our culture, but it hasn't completely gone away. And he was born into a land that was under a brutal foreign occupation 
as Luke mentions, the, that Roman census that Joseph was obeying and returning to Bethlehem to take part in that census. Um, the, the people of Judea were a subject people under a very harsh empire. And he was born in a stable because there was no room for them. They were more or less homeless at that particular moment. And many of our neighbors here in New York have experienced homeless, some very long-term homeless. And furthermore, um, according to the story, he was a threat to the powers that be when he was born, so much so that when King Herod couldn't locate the exact whereabouts of the baby Jesus, he simply decided to have all the young male children of, that he, of Jesus' approximate age in that area killed and, uh, for the sake of preserving that ruling order, which was deemed more important than the lives of innocent children. And that sort of darkness uh, we see today still um, families that are homeless here in our own city, families displaced and homeless in Gaza and, and in Jerusalem after a brutal Hamas attack on October 7th. We've had to find new places to live and mourn their losses and live with the injuries and the trauma of that awful day and the ensuing war that's taken so many lives that has followed. Um, there's darkness in Ukraine, uh, the Sudan, Darfur, and South Sudan. Uh, on the border, our southern border of this country, so many fleeing persecution and being met with less than a welcome mat, to be sure. Um, it's dark times, and I've been around for a little while now, but uh, these are as, as dark as they've been in my lifetime, though I know this country and many of may have uh, gone through the dark times of the Depression and uh, uh, and then we have our history of slavery and civil war and World War II and, um, and the, the light keeps shining and we trust that that light will keep, will abide through the darkness no matter how dark it gets. But what can we do ourselves, individually anyway, to bring more light into this world and to welcome Christmas Day, to welcome the Christ child, to welcome that Christ child in the form of any and every child born these, in this time, to make this world a better place, a more welcoming place for that child. I know on my, for my, uh, on my part, I'm gonna try to love more and hope more, I'm gonna uh, endeavor to love everyone. I'm going to love Jeff as perfectly as I can, and Gloria, <laughs> Virginia, Joanne, David, and our guest here. I don't. <laughs> what is your name? Can you? George. <laughs> love George. Welcome, George, and Reverend Joe, and Kevin, and Edie, Diane, and I hope you all uh, aspire to a higher, more perfect love. We can't ever achieve it, but there's, it's a glorious thing to keep striving for it. And I'm going to keep uh, praying for everyone, even folks um, uh, that I don't, might not have the greatest hopes for, uh, but I'll pray for them anyway, because you never know. Look at, in the, in Peter's epistle, he mentions Saul, who went from being one of the fiercest persecutors of the church, who 
approved the stoning and killing of the first Christian martyr, St. Stephen, somehow Saul became Paul, one of the greatest, fiercest advocates of Christianity, of the word of God, of the message of Christ, the good news. So I'll pray for people like Vladimir Putin that somehow he'll find it in his heart to love the people of Ukraine and love his own people enough to spare their lives from a, a folly, a, a, a worthless war for imperial glory that it's not worth any drop of blood at all. And I'll pray for folks who support authoritarians. Do you think the world would be just great if we had the right dictator in place? That never works out. I pray uh, they'll love their fellow countrymen, country people, pardon me, enough to give up that dream, that fallacy, and seek to find common ground with those whom they think they have stark divisions with. And if anyone else has um, something they think uh, t they can do to welcome Christmas Day today, next week, uh, maybe Reverend Joe can bring you the microphone and you can share it. Or if you have something to share on Zoom, you can just raise your hand. We'll try to make it quick because we got a big event coming up this evening. But uh, uh, anybody on Zoom? I think Kevin's trying to make the switch. Yes, yes. Ah, Diane Mason, would you like to share something? Yes, yes. I would like to share a sense of our own American uh, responsibility for the Ukraine situation and that the US and NATO kept moving NATO closer and closer and closer to the Russian border. And what happened, I think, as terrible as it is, was inevitable. And um, we have to take some responsibility for that. Uh, look what happened when um, Cuba, Russia, moved closer and closer to our border, to us in Cuba. We were ready to go to war. So we have to take that taking of responsibility is important. And I just also want to say that with the horrendous Gaza situation, while October 17th was horrific, uh, we have to keep in mind, my people especially, the whole history, the fact of the establishment of a state and to question the the justice of that in the middle of the 20th century, uh, which forced the removal of all the Arabs there, the Palestinians, forced removal. Did that make any sense? And to me, that made October 7th, as horrific as it was, as inevitable as what happened with the Nat Turner slave rebellion in the United States. So the taking of responsibility is tremendous to, to realize where responsibility lies and to keep the love going, as Wayne so eloquently said. Thank you. Thank you, taking responsibility. Thank you, Eve. Uh, now, Edie Diane. This on? Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Oh, my goodness, that gave me this greatest shock. I mean, I want to, you said to welcome Christmas. I mean, we are so blessed to be in this incredible church and this evening to be celebrating our 49th anniversary of the candlelight service. And this, my joy, so much joy in my heart. I see love everywhere I go. And I was very touched that uh, Wayne was able to give his beautiful blessing and was aware of using gender-free language. That was a blessing. And that's all I have to say. Oh, and I'm blessed that my wonderful son just called me a few minutes ago and um, 
just so happy that he is happy and, and he's with his Michelle, Ian and Michelle. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Lady Diane. Gratitude is definitely a wonderful way to welcome Christmas. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you for hearing the message today.